Jivo, Jivo, Jivo. That's what seems to be leading most mainline American freight trains these days. Thousands of these engines are roaming the rails, and plenty more are being built with no end in sight. So what allowed the Jivo to dominate North American rails? Trains haven't always been the greatest at keeping the environment clean. Electric and diesel power looked to change that, but even then, diesels could still be pretty filthy. Eventually, the country realized pollution was indeed bad, so the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, was established in 1970 to address rising concerns of pollution. For the railroads, this period saw them cleaning up rail yards that had decades worth of cinders, grease, and oil from steam locomotives caked into the ballast. Amtrak had to rebuild the entirety of their 14th Street yard in Chicago, which hadn't really been maintained since the 50s. Old and weary locomotives were also finally being phased out in favor of a new generation. By the 1990s, those engines were getting old and being replaced by a third generation. The EPA pushed railroads to adopt new Tier 1 emission standards for new and refurbished locomotives throughout the latter half of the decade. New standards meant reducing the amount of carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxides released from engines. At the turn of the 21st century, chances are you'd be seeing the SD40-2, AC4400 CW, SD70s, and Dash 8 and 9 series powering freight trains on the main line. GE began dominating the locomotive market with increased efficiency and reliability through the use of the era's new technologies. Around this time, the EPA introduced new Tier 2 emission standards going into effect in 2005. So whatever General Electric or Electromotive Division were cooking up in the shops was going to need to meet those standards. Since 1959, GE had been reusing and improving their 7FDL 16-cylinder prime mover, but at this point, they weren't going to be able to reduce its emissions without sacrificing power. $400 million were poured into research and development of their next locomotive with an all-new prime mover design. The Evolution series was the result. The first model was classified as an AC V12 Tier 2 pre-production. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? It was rated for a top speed of 75 miles per hour using a GE Jivo 12-cylinder engine producing 4,400 horsepower. It weighed in at 432,000 pounds, came in at a length of 73 feet 2 inches, a width of 9 feet 11 inches, and a height of 15 feet 5 inches. Visually, it looked very similar to the Dash 9 and AC 4400 CW, but the Jivo produced more tractive effort, burned far less fuel, and created fewer emissions. This was accomplished by the Prime Mover creating the same amount of power as its predecessors, but with 12 cylinders as opposed to 16. GE CX number 2005 was the first model built for demonstration purposes, rolling out of the Erie, Pennsylvania shop in March 2002. Union Pacific and BNSF then tested a total of 35 GE-owned units throughout 2003 and 4. Results proved quite positive and exceeded expectations. Increased acceleration and tractive effort, traction control on individual axles to prevent wheel slip, improved computer tech, and higher rates of reliability and efficiency were all selling points that got America's Class 1 railroads eyeing up the Jivo. The locomotive entered official production as the ES44AC in 2004. All the other Class 1s would receive their own units in the following years. UP owning the most at over 1,000 engines. In short, the Jivo was a massive success, with several variants being created to cater to each railroad's needs. The ES40 DC was downgraded to 4,000 horsepower with DC traction motors to save money for Norfolk Southern. The ES44 DC kept the horsepower but had DC traction for BNSF, Canadian National, and CSX. And the ES44 C4 has four traction motors instead of three and unpowered center axles for BNSF. Jivos also found work on Class 2 Railroad's Iowa Interstate and Florida East Coast, as they experienced heavier workloads. International customers can be found in Australia, Brazil, China, Egypt, India, Russia, and several other countries. Some of them have a unique body design, but under the hood is a Jivo Prime Mover all the same. 
Heading back to the US, just when it seemed like the railroads were caught up with emission standards, the EPA's even stricter Tier 4 regulations were due to take effect in 2015. So that year, GE delivered its first Tier 4 GEVOS, the ET44AC, to Canadian National. Notably, they have large V-shaped radiators at the rear, which is the only clear way of distinguishing a Tier 4 from other models. At 16 feet 1 inch tall, they've hit the maximum allowed height for diesel locomotives operating in the US while still meeting clearances for tunnels and overpasses. With an even larger reduction in emissions and general improvements all around, they're some of the most modern and cleanest burning diesel locomotives out there today. All Class 1s roster a sizable fleet of these engines, with the newest ones being built this year in 2023, now under the Wabtec name. With its introduction, the Class 1s were able to retire or sell off many of their older, sometimes beat down locomotives, as the Jeevo became the primary source of mainline power. Today, over 7,000 of these units populate American rails, making them some of the best selling engines in the country's history. Chances are you'll recognize one coming by the sound of their deep toned horns. Or by the colorful sight of the many heritage unit Jeevos. As common and boring as they are to some, the Evolution series is doing a service by keeping carbon emissions low, and thus keeping the Earth just a little bit cleaner. If you're ever thinking, Ugh, another Jeevo? I'm not gonna bother taking a picture or video of it. Just remember that one day the Jeevo will be gone, and you'll be glad you documented them. The Jeevo dominates North American railroads because it works. Simple as that. It's cleaner, reliable, modern, and they've proven their worth in heavy freight and helper service, while also keeping up the speed on high-priority intermodal trains. Safe to say, the Jeevo is here to stay. Thank you to my channel members. Special thanks to Arizona Hot Rail, United 001, Mooter, Evans H.O. and N Productions, Grand Canyon Studios, and Tommy Rosini for subscribing to the Conductor tier. Your extra support always means and helps me out a lot. Normally I don't really advertise my channel membership stuff, but if you're interested, I do post like early previews of thumbnails, video ideas I'm working on. I'm more likely to reply to your video ideas or comments you leave on the community posts. Conductor tier members get a special shout out like I just did a little bit ago. You also get access to these emojis and you get a little icon next to your name that changes color depending on how long you've been subscribed. So if any of that interests you, go ahead and hit the join button and it's free to cancel anytime. Alright, so that's all I got for this video, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.